Hello, you know. Today we are making shoe pastry. Okay, so this is a quite a complex skill. Last week in your um, theory lesson, you looked at raising agents and what different things can raise food. So you would have looked at chemical raising agents such as self-raising power and baking powder. You would have looked at mechanical raising agents such as um, creaming and whisking. Um, you would have also looked at biological raising agents like uh, yeast. And we're also going to, we're going to look at steam today. So steam can actually be used as a raising agent. Now, as a class, we have made shoe short crust pastry before. This is a slightly different type of pastry. Okay, shoe, C-H-O-U-X, is quite tough to get right. And it takes a couple of goes. Okay, but if you follow my top tips as we go through, hopefully that will lead you to a really, really successful pastry. Um, it may still require a little bit of practice though. So, shoe pastry is different from other pastry. This isn't a pastry that we roll out like a dough. So, with short crust and puff pastry, we can obviously bring it together into a big dough ball, roll it out and shape it as we need to. Shoe pastry is very, very wet, so we can't do that. So, what I'll do is I'll talk to you about the science as we go through. So, you've got a PowerPoint on Go For Schools. Um, I'm going to actually double the ingredients from that PowerPoint. So, it says 65 grams of butter on your PowerPoint. I'm actually going to use 130. Okay, so your butter goes into a saucepan, please. Oops. Okay, and it is really important that you um, correct with the weighing, so make sure it's dead on 130, please. 104. Okay, 128, 130, lovely. What you also want then is some cold water in here. Now that seems a, oops, that seems a little bit weird putting butter and water in there together, but trust me, okay? So I want 200 ml of water. Measure it carefully, don't measure it up here, okay, with it all wobbling around. Put it on a flat surface and make sure you have the right amount. So if I'm using 200, you might only want 100. If you're using my measurements on your PowerPoint, it's probably gonna make about six shoe buns, depending on how big you make them. So water and butter are in there together. What I also want you to do then is get your flour weighed out and ready to go. Now, I've asked you to use, oh, it just says flour. So, plain flour or strong flour both work with this. What's 80 times 2? Thank you. Um, you can use plain flour or strong flour. Most of the time, I prefer to use strong flour. And the reason for that, we'll have a look at in a minute. Okay, once we start constructing the pastry. 160. There we go. So plain or strong flour is fine. It's not self-raising flour. Shoe pastry doesn't use self-raising flour. Okay, even though it rises, it's the steam that helps it rise. So I've got my flour ready to go, and my water and my butter. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna heat this water and butter together. Now what's important to remember is you need to bring this to boiling point, okay? So it must, you must be able to visibly see bubbles. The butter must all be melted, and the liquid must be boiling. Do not let it boil for too long. If you let it boil for too long, the liquid's all gonna evaporate, we're gonna lose all that liquid we need, but it must be boiling. When it is boiling, you must shoot this flour in very quickly. Okay, so dunk it in really quickly, and then mix like crazy, okay? If your water isn't boiling, this next stage won't work. So, you want your heat on a medium to low heat, and we are going to let this water and butter boil together. Okay, you can break the butter up a little bit, and that will obviously make things go a little bit quicker. So, we are waiting.
for this liquid, for the butter to melt and the liquid in there then to come to the boil. As I said, that's really important because when we add our flour, that's going to gelatinize the starch. It's going to release the starch and then make this mixture thicken. That thickening is super important. If that stage doesn't happen, you have to start again. Okay, you must bring things to the boil. Okay, so you can see the butter started to melt, but nothing is boiling yet. You must wait for those bubbles to be going all throughout the mixture. Okay, not just at the sides here, tiny little bubbles. You wanna see those bubbles and the boil in the middle of this. That will ensure everything is 100 degrees. Okay, and get your flour ready to go. Okay, so when it's boiling, don't let it boil for too long. For just a few seconds, put the flour straight in for a Turn the heat off and start beating, okay? It will look a bit porridgey to start, but the more that you mix it, the more you're gonna really agitate the flour and release the starch. And then you get a mixture like that. Okay, keep on going for a little bit. Make sure you've got all those big lumps of flour um, beaten out. Okay, and that is exactly what you want. If at this stage it is still really runny in the bottom of the pan, okay, it means that your water wasn't hot enough um, and you may want to put it back on the heat for a little bit to see if it um, thickens up. If it is really crumbly at this stage, it's because there wasn't enough liquid in there or you evaporated that liquid and let it boil for too long. You want a texture just like that, okay? You then need to let this cool. So put it to the side, take it off the heat, let it cool for a bit. While the pastry is cooling, you guys can get your eggs into a bowl or a measuring jug and then beat them. So on your PowerPoint, I said two eggs, I'm doubling, so we're using four for them. Okay, you want the whole egg, not like meringue when you just want the egg white. So the whole egg goes in. One, two, three, four. Then beat. You now just need to wait until your pastry is cool. Okay, it just needs to be really cool, so please be patient. If we add these eggs into that pastry while it's still really hot, these eggs will scramble. Okay, so you must be patient. Give it a good 10 to 15 minutes to cool. Maybe leave it by an open window, and then we can start adding our eggs. So in the meantime, you can get yourselves cleaned out. Okay, you nine. Bye. Shoe paste is cool now, okay, to the touch. So I can feel that. It's not hot anymore. Make sure you've lifted underneath, okay, because the, the pan will hold heat for quite a while. And I can feel all around there is quite cool. So now we're ready to start adding our eggs. So I've got my four eggs in here, because I've doubled it. You guys might have two eggs. And then we're going to start adding this gradually. Now these eggs are a guide. You may not use all of this mixture, and you may use a little bit more, okay, um, if you've got spare eggs. But it's just a guide because eggs come in all different shapes, uh, size, not shapes, all different sizes. You get some small eggs and you get some bigger eggs. And obviously the bigger they are, the more liquid they have in them. So this is just a guide. You guys need to get really good at deciding for yourself when you've had enough, when, it, when the mixture's had enough. So we're gonna add a little bit first of all, and then we're gonna start beating this. Now what you'll see happen is this isn't very appealing, but the mixture will start to separate a little bit and go kind of weird and slimy. You must keep on beating through that and the mixture will come back together again. Okay, so you need to be firm with it. Make sure you've got your spatula or spoon, you're holding it close to the base of the spoon, not at the top. See kids like just tickling the pastry basically, it takes them forever. Make sure you've got a real firm grasp of the spoon. And once all that egg is mixed in, I tend to fly everywhere here. Once all the egg is mixed in, add a bit more. Now you can, oh for goodness sake, you can use an electric whisk for this stage. 
But if it's your first time doing shoe pastry, I would rather you didn't. I'd rather you did it by hand so that you can feel those different consistencies. Okay, so it goes slowly and then it comes back together again. Add a little bit more. Now this stage does take time. Make sure you are gradual with it. Make sure you are patient. If you put too much egg in at this stage, there's no going back. Okay, so you must get it right the first time. Otherwise, you'll just have to start again. Okay, so. You'll start to see this mixture thinning out a little bit. Your arm will start to ache. So you can see, look, how that's getting a little bit wetter now. So the consistency we're looking for, and when we can stop, is when it reaches something called a dropping consistency. So you want it to be liquidy, but you don't want it to pour off of the spoon. Like when we made our lasagna, we wanted that sauce to come off in ribbons and be quite wet. This, you want to be quite reluctant to drop. Okay, it needs to feel quite heavy to drop off the spoon. Now that is a little bit heavy at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more egg in there. I think there's a picture on the PowerPoint, on the second slide, of what you want it to look like. So, what I've got to is, I've used all my eggs now, but if I lift this spoon up, I can see that this is not dropping. Okay, it's holding there like a bit of cement. So I'm going to break another egg. Beat it and start adding that gradually. Did you say something? Oh. The reason is probably because I've bought some cheap eggs. They're a bit smaller than what um, they might usually be. So you might find if you've got smaller eggs, you might just need a little bit more. Just a tiny bit. To get that dropping consistency. There we go. Right. So, that's the sort of texture you're looking for. Okay, if you hold it on your spoon, Okay, it should reluctantly drop off. Okay, so it won't pour off like a sauce. It should be quite thick. What you are going to do then, wipe your side down, because if you're like me, you've probably got egg and pastry everywhere. It's clean as we go. So we can pipe these, but I'm not, we're not gonna pipe them today. We're gonna do some piping later on in the year or next year. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do some piping later with the cream. I'm aware that not all of you might have piping bags at home. So what you can use, you know, I've got a set of measuring spoons here. If you've got these, then perfect. If not, you can just use your wooden spoon that you had. I'm going to take a tablespoon, and just like with our cupcakes way back in year seven, and with our sponge jam tarts in year eight, you're going to take a tablespoon and just dollop your pastry straight on to a baking tray. Now, if you don't have a silicone mat like we have in school, um, greaseproof paper is absolutely fine. You wanna give this quite a bit of space because these will puff up quite considerably. So in the oven, these are gonna rise. Now, they're gonna rise magically, not magically, scientifically. Um, there's no baking powder in here, there's no bicarbonate of soda, there's no self-raising flour. So how do these rise? Okay, it uses steam. Now we've put lots of liquid into this pastry. We put our water, we melted our butter which turns into a liquid, and then we added egg. And this pastry is really wet. Now use your knowledge of science and think about what happens to water and liquid when we heat it. When I put these into the oven, what's gonna happen? Okay, that water is gonna to start to evaporate and turn into steam. That steam then 
creates pressure inside the shoe pastry which forces it to rise. Okay. So the steam creates pressure which forces the shoe pastry to rise. That creates a hollow shell inside these pastries which we can then fill with all sorts of fillings. I'm going to fill mine with double cream. You could fill yours with like a pastry custard, a creme patisserie. A patisserie. Uh, you could even do savoury ones. So if you're not really a fan of sweet desserts, these haven't got any sugar in them, so they can, so they can be savoury. You could fill them with like cream cheese and bacon and things like that. Without anything in them, they taste like Yorkshire puddings. Okay, it's the same ingredients basically, um, egg, and, egg and liquid. So, get them in there, try and space them out. Okay, and try and keep them all the same size, otherwise you're gonna have some cooked um, and ready to like, start burning basically, and some that are completely raw. Once you've done that and got them all on there, the next really important stage is to get some cold water, just dip your finger in the water, and you're just gonna pat a little bit on top of these pastries okay now don't drown them just a little bit this creates extra steam in the oven and it helps to give these pastries a nice crisp outer shell okay we want a crisp outer shell because otherwise they're going to be all floppy when we try and fill them with pastry okay so putting a bit of steam, a bit of water in the oven with your product will help give it a crisp. But sometimes people do it with bread. They put like a baking tray of water or a roasting tin of water at the bottom of the oven while their bread's baking and it helps to give their bread a nice crispy outer layer. If your, past if your pastries are messy, then you can use this opportunity to just neaten them up a little bit. Okay. So, key points. Make sure your water is boiling before you add your flour. Don't boil it for too long because otherwise your uh, water will evaporate. So make sure it's boiling. Put the, the flour in quickly. Next key point is leave your shoe paste to cool for as long as possible before adding the eggs. Otherwise they will scramble and cook. We don't want them to cook then. The next top tip is to um, put a little bit of water in your pastries. Now with your ovens, you need to read the method carefully because the oven, temp the oven needs to change temperature every now and again. So you need to start them at 200 degrees for 10 minutes. So watch the time. After 10 minutes, heat the oven to 220 and bake for another 15 or 20 minutes. So start at 200 for 10 minutes, then turn it up to 220 for 15 to 20 minutes. So my shoe pastries have come out of the oven now, so they went in at 200 for 100 minute, for 10 minutes, turned the oven up to 220 for 15 to 20 minutes, and then you'll see on the PowerPoint, after that, I pricked them, and they're a good colour, pricked them with a toothpick, or if you've got a sharp knife, you can do that, I then put them back into the oven, what happens then is all of that steam, let's come closer, all of that steam that gets trapped in these pastries while they're rising escapes. If we don't prick them, what happens is the steam stays in. As it cools, think about science, it condensates and turns to moisture. It then makes these shoe pastries go really um, soft, okay, and it loses their structure. We want to keep that nice, firm structure on the outside. Now, what we can see is if we cut into one of these now, is that the middle is hollow, okay? And that's exactly what we want. That is then perfect for filling with anything you want. I'm gonna fill mine with cream, I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, I'm not gonna cut into all of mine because I'm gonna pipe my cream in. But if you haven't got a piping bag, you can just cut them in half, fill it with cream, and then put them back together like a sandwich. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So, with the cream, we're just gonna whip the cream. I've also got some chocolate that I'm gonna to top them with. Um, so I've got a saucepan full of simmering water and then putting chocolate in a measuring jug which I'm then going to sit on top of the simmering water. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is whip the cream. Okay. 
Right, when you're whipping cream, you want to be careful you don't over whip it. Okay, this is just about there. Okay, so it needs to stay smooth. If you see it getting to that point and then you keep on going past it, what will happen is the cream will start to separate and become really lumpy. Okay, we don't want that. It looks like it started to curdle that way. This is what we want, a nice smooth cream with, I don't know if you can see, just about, with, you can see it's just hanging to the whisk and it's creating nice smooth peaks. It should go without saying that these um, pastries should be properly cool before you start adding the cream. If you don't let them cool, when the cream goes in, the heat will get to it and it will start to melt out. We don't actually get time to fill these in a normal lesson. Okay, so if we were doing this today in a lesson, you wouldn't be filling them because they wouldn't be cool in time. You'd take them home to fill them. So I need to make a little hole in some of these pastries to get my piping bag in. So what I'm doing is just making a little hole in the pastry. Now there'll be parts where the pastry is weaker. You should be able to see where it's split a little bit. Here, I'd make your hole in there. Okay. That's if you're piping. If you're cutting it in half, obviously you don't need to worry about that. Then we are gonna have a look at piping. So, with a piping bag, some of you have uh, these little tiny ones you've picked up from Tesco's that are like for icing, not really piping stuff like this. I suggest, if you like cooking, you get yourself a good piping bag like these. These are like, you get a box of 100 to 200 for about a tenner. They last you for ages. You have a nozzle, okay? You might want to, you're gonna cut the end of the piping bag off so that our nozzle pokes through the end. Roll your piping bag down. I would shove a bit of bag in the end of the nozzle so that your cream doesn't come pouring out. Roll your bag down. I know if you've got somebody at home, you can use them for this part. If you haven't got any of at home, anybody at home, you can just start scooping in. But if you have, you can put your bag through their hands if they hold their hands like that, and then roll it down over their hands. Then take all of your cream. And start putting it into the bag. Okay, try not to get it everywhere. Thank you. And you can take the bag off of them. And obviously, this is quite a big bag for such a small amount of cream. Should have bought more. So, what we do then is once your cream is in there, it's pushed down in the bag, okay, to the very bottom. Don't push it all the way to the end just yet. You then have all this excess. Now this gets in the way. So what we're going to do is with this excess, take the bag like this, just at the top of the cream, and all of this, if you wrap that around your thumb, okay, it makes it a little bit easier to handle. So I grabbed it like that, and I wrapped the excess around my thumb. Then just gently, Give the bag a couple of twists, okay? Now, this top hand is the squeezing hand, not this bit. Some people, I even sit on Bake Off, which really annoys me. People squeeze from here. Don't do that. You're gonna end up with air pockets and it's gonna poof everywhere, okay? We wanna squeeze from the top. This hand is just to guide and to hold steady. This is your squeezing hand. So what we do is we then take our shoe pastry, find your hole, Apparently I haven't made a hole enough, here we go. Okay, and then you're gonna squeeze your cream in, okay? You should be able to feel it going into the shoe. Okay, and just keep on squeezing until a little bit of cream just pops out the end of the This and then be turned inside out to get the nozzle out. And then you can chuck 
Ah, dropped it, there's cream everywhere. Chuck that away. Tidy up all the cream you've dropped all over the place. It's because I was being an idiot. Got it all up my leg. Um, you can do this a variety of ways. You can coat the top with the chocolate or you can just drizzle it over the top. So what we can do is take our shoe and we can literally just pop the top of the pastry in. Okay, keep your fingers out of it. And then, oh, hello. You can put it maybe not straight on the serving board. And that will then, I don't want to put it on my serving plate straight away. This will then cool and harden on top. So actually I want to take that off and put it back on there because if it drips, it's going to ruin my serving tray, isn't it? It's just, just like... So keep on going doing that. If you don't want to do that, you can take a spoon. I'll show you how to do it in a minute. And we can drizzle it on top. It depends how much chocolate you've got really. Obviously this way uses the most chocolate. So what might be nice, to, I've lost that one. That one's gonna be very chocolatey. <laughs> what one might be nice to do on the top as well is um, add a little bit of color. So what I usually like to do is make some honeycomb. And I would have shown you how to do honeycomb if we was in school, because it'd be a demonstration lesson. Um, and then I like to crunch, break the honeycomb up really small and then like dust it on top that then adds that extra little bit of colour, which is quite nice. Now, if you didn't want to dunk the whole lot in chocolate, what you could do is just take a spoon. Let's move this around. Okay, and you can just get the spoon of chocolate and you can just drizzle it over the top instead. Depends what you're looking for, really, doesn't it? You could also melt a little bit of white chocolate and have some of that in there, some white chocolate, maybe some strawberries inside there with it. Did you say toffee, miss? Yeah. Yeah, toffee. Um, if you had, if you were doing, if you were filling these with like a pastry custard, like creme pat, like I said earlier, you might want some fruit in there. You're spoiling them, miss. <laughs> oh, that one's cut in half, I remember that now. Mother's Day coming up. Mother's Day is coming up. What a great little recipe for Mother's Day. My mum loves these. You could also, oh, chocolate orange. Get some orange in there. Chocolate orange shoe pastries. Yes, please. There we go. So, two different finishes there. Okay, let's bring them a bit closer. Got these ones, and they're just drizzled on top. They can go in the fridge to cool them, and like I said, the chocolate will set. Or we've got these ones that are absolutely topped with chocolate, okay? You might want to, um, I mean, you can practice honeycomb. We do it in school anyway. Put some honeycomb on top. Or once it is cool, you could then um, put some icing sugar on top, which I'll do shortly. Um, but that, the chocolate must be cool and set first of all. Otherwise, it will just all dissolve on top. So, shoe pastry, yum. Um, have a go at it, please. Even if you don't fill them, thank you, miss. Even if you don't fill them, it'll be great to see you having a go at shoe. It might not go right first time. I, it took me a while to perfect it. Make sure you get those tips in there. So, just stand like this. Um, make sure that water's boiling. Get the flour in quickly. Don't put the eggs in until the pastry's properly cool. And then watch your temperatures in the oven. Prick the pastry so the steam escapes. Um, and then it gives that nice crunchy texture that can be full up. Okay, I will speak to you very soon, you nine. Thank you very much. Bye.